everybody. Welcome back. Today we are going to look at a little bit more about command blocks. Are you ready? I think you are. Let's do it. All right, first thing we are going to do is a little bit into map making, some things that you might want to do when you are creating a map. All right, first thing I want to show you is the clear inventory. You can clear the nearest player here. So if I do clear at P and I do done, and I will get myself a button and we'll put it in here. Boom. I hit that and it clears my inventory. Okay. I'm going to give myself a few more command blocks here and a button. And I can come in here and I can clear myself of actually, um, let's see here. We're going to clear at P. What do we want to clear myself of? Let's get rid of command blocks. So if I do that, uh, we activate it and I hit the button. Then I've cleared all my command blocks. If I want to clear, I believe I can do one there at the end. And we will come back here. Just keep giving ourselves more buttons and command blocks. Boom, 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 boom. So if I hit that, boom. Did I get rid of anything? Did it let me do it? No items to remove. Oh, that means the type of command block. Let's try that. Let's see. Boom. And we'll go one at a time. There's another one. And another one. So that second number right there, that's the data tag value. So the command block of zero, that gets rid of the command block zero type um, like we've looked at in the past. So there's one deal that we can do. Another thing that we can do is we can summon a whole bunch of mobs. You wanna do it? Let's do this. This is a lot of fun. We can have a lot of fun with this and we are going to summon. Remember to use the tab key. Tab is very, very important. Let's do some slimes here. We're gonna tab this over and we're gonna talk about teal days. Let's do teal days real quick. If I do teal day, teal day, teal day, that is the shift accent markup by the escape key on your keyboard. And that teal day allows you to get the coordinates of where that player is or where the command block is. So right now, if I hit F3, hit F3 on your keyboard uh, on the top, not F and three, but the F3 key on the top. Look here, uh, in on top left right there, it says looking at negative 739, four and negative 199. I am looking at that coordinate right there, okay? And then I come over here, I'm looking at this coordinate, which is negative 737, four and negative 199. So here, teal day, teal day, teal day represents negative 739, for a negative 199. So instead of having to memorize it, it puts you into that specific spot. It's very, very handy. Now, if I summon a slime right now at that spot, it's gonna be inside the command block. So we don't wanna do that. The middle teal day represents up and down, the Y value, up and down. So if I put a one there, it's gonna go on top of the command block. Right now though, we are in uh, E peaceful. So let's go to easy. And I'm gonna put another button on this command block. If you need to put a button on something, hold down shift and right click it, especially like a command block or a furnace or something like that, that uh, when you right click it, it does something else. So shift and right click, puts the button down. Boom, there is a slime. What's up slime? Boom, there's another one. And another one. And another one. And another one. So if I were to come back and change this to nothing, notice what's gonna happen. He's gonna summon inside the command block and he's gonna get hurt. So that's a big deal. Notice, yeah, he just totally pops because like, he's dying instantly. So you do that to a bunny or something like that. You wanna make sure that you summon it a little bit higher. I guess it's called a rabbit actually. So let's do this. And right click it and there's a little bunny. What up rabbit? And notice they're all the same color at this point. You can change the type. Ooh, look at this. You can change the type specifically um, if that's what you wanna do. And look, they're all jumping. It was a bunny bomb. <laughs> all right, one thing that's really, really cool. If you hold down control and middle click, you can copy the command block with the command inside it. So control middle click gives me the command. Now if I put that command down, look, there's the command inside it. So I can destroy this, I can destroy this, and I can come over here, can right click, and there it is. I've put the command right inside there. Very, very cool. Okay, so let's look at what else we can do with the summon command. This is pretty powerful. So we're gonna summon, uh, let's do a creeper, and we're gonna put him one higher than the block. And we can add several things at the end down here. Okay, we can give it a custom name. So let's give this custom name. What do we want? Let's call him Bob. All right, let's see if this will work. So I can put a button on it and boom, there it is. Hey, Bob, what's up, Bob? Bob the Creeper. Okay, so we're gonna have several Bobs all over the place. All right, and let's create a Creeper named Judy. What's up, Judy? All right, so we've got Bob and Judy and Bob 
and Judy. There we go. So we got a whole bunch of Judys and Bob and Bob and Bob. Awesome. Okay. So what we can do now, which is pretty cool, I want to talk about the at symbol. This is pretty awesome. I'm going to teleport all entities with the type, actually with the name of Bob to me. So we will put that and we will tab to Pelican Tacos. That's me. And we hit enter and we've just teleported all Bobs to me. All right. Instead of Judy, Judy is over there. Bob is right there. Pretty cool. This at symbol, very, very important. Let's go at it right here. Notice right here, at P is the nearest player. At R is a random player. At A is all the players. And at E targets all entities, which is the type of creeper like we just did. But if you clarify it by putting name equals Bob, it brings them all to you. So we can do the same thing with Judy. We're going to teleport all Judys to me. Whereas if we do this and we just say type equals creeper, it's going to teleport all the creepers in the whole world to me. All right. And we can do some pretty cool things. Type creeper, but they have to be within a radius of like five. So only those creepers will teleport to me. Okay. So now if I teleport the creepers of five, there is no creepers within a radius of five. Now there's a cute little bunny. What's up, bunny? All right, so that is really, really handy. So use that radius technique. That is very, very helpful. The R equals, that means a maximum radius of five. If we do it the other way around, we can say radius M, which means minimum of five, meaning everything outside of that radius, it's gonna teleport all the creepers to me. Or now if I do it, it's not gonna teleport them to me because they are too far or too close to me. A radius of a minimum, all right? That's very, very handy there. Okay, other things that we're gonna look at is uh, something like a spawn point. With map making, you really do want to have, maybe you don't want someone to spawn specifically in a, uh, like an area, you want them to be a specific spot. So here's what you do. You come in, you put a command block down, and wherever you put the command block, do set world, and you can just tab it. Set world spawn, hit enter. So right here, now if I kill myself, I will end up close to that command block. I'm very, very close to it. I do it again and I will be near this command block. It, what it does is it spawns you within a specific radius of that command block. So maybe you want them to start in a specific spot. Well, let's do that. So what we do, we right click on it. It's always active. It is a repeater. And we are going to teleport all players. So we will teleport at A within a radius of let's just say 25 because the radius is uh, about a 33 by 33 block radius and um, we can put them in a game mode of two. Mode, this is adventure, um, survival, and creative, and spectator. Mode of two is adventure, so this way if I'm only in spectator, I will teleport to a specific spot, which is very, very handy. So what we're going to do now is I'm gonna put tilde, tilde, tilde. Um, it's always active. I'm not in adventure mode right now, so it's not gonna do anything to me. It's gonna turn purple, and let's just say we wanna go back over here and we want to teleport them right in the middle right here. So we will look at this coordinate. And the coordinate of this one is negative 6, 760, 3, and negative 206. So to not remember that, you can always type it into chat. Hit a 3, negative 206. Hit a control A and a control C to copy it. Or you can just hit enter and it's in the chat. Now we can go back to the command block. If I went in the right spot. There we go. And I'm going to right click in here. And I'm going to now paste it in. Maybe. There we go. Paste it in. And so now if you are in game mode um, two, we will teleport at that block. Now three was that block. Four is one a block above it. So make sure you do one a block above. Otherwise, you'll teleport yourself into the ground. All right. So we'll go to done. We're going to change our game mode to and we will be in two. So now we're in adventure and we immediately teleport here. Now when I kill myself, I will teleport right back at that spot. It's almost for like a split second, right? That you, a fraction of a second that you're there, okay? So very, 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 very powerful for you to do things with map making. You're going to want to have to start at a specific spot. So now when I get close to it, if I'm in creative, it doesn't do anything. So you want to put the spawn point far enough away to where it's not going to affect you. Because let's just say I happen to be over here and now, let's see where is it? it's going to be this way. I go into, oh, now these creepers are going to come after me. I get close enough to that purple block and I spawn over here. Does that make sense? So it actually just brought me all the way over there. Let's go back into creative. 
And let's work with a couple more things that we might have. Okay, let's look at effects now. If we do effect at P, and we can just tab all through the different effects that we're gonna have. So water breathing, saturation, luck, absorption, limitation, speed, slowness, weakness, and so forth. So you can do any effect that you'd like on a random player, on all the players, on a specific player. You can put the name in there as well, but at P will give you the closest player. And let's do some things that are for map making that would be very, very important. So like jump boost, if I do a jump boost uh, for 10 seconds at a strength of 128, this is very, very cool. This allows it, so if I do this, I cannot jump, cannot jump. For 10 seconds, I will not be able to jump. Notice I have the particles around, okay? I'm not able to jump, and then after 10 seconds, it'll go away and I'm able to jump. Very, very handy. Notice the particles are there as well, so if you put true at the end, hit done, it will not make it so I have particles. That's very, very handy, so that when you look at me right now, I do not have any particles on me, which is very, 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 very cool, okay? so. Let's go back into the command block. We can do the same thing with anything else. To clear your effect, this is what you do, just slash effect at P, clear. You can clear them of a specific jump boost or whatever, you can put that in after the end, but I'm just gonna do clear, so it'll clear all my effects and we will put it in there and now I can jump, okay? All right, the other one that's very, very helpful is our speed boost. So if you don't want a player to move, you don't want them to jump, nor do you want them to move around, it's effect at P, and it is slowness, and uh, it, it, we can do for 10 seconds, 128. So we will do that, and this will make it so that I'm completely slow. If I hit that, now I cannot move, nor can I jump. So I am frozen. So let's just say you wanted to have, uh, you know, a, a survival games or something like that, where you're putting them on pedestals, you would want to put a slowness uh, for 10 seconds or however long for 128 and the jump boost for 128 as well. We forgot to put true at the end there, so we will clear our effects. Now I can jump and I can move, but I hit that and I hit that and notice I cannot move. So I am just standing here not able to move. I can't even move. I'm trying to jump, I'm trying to move, and nothing is actually happening. So this is pretty, pretty cool, pretty powerful for what you might be wanting to do uh, in any sort of map that you might be making, whether that's a mini game or adventure or anything like that. Okay, so those are some of the effects. Play around with all the effects. There's a ton of different effects that you can do there. All right, one of the other things you might want to do is to set someone's spawn point. So if they die like a checkpoint, we can come in here and we can type in spawn point uh, at your current position, maybe one above or something like that. Uh, we put at P in here and boom, there it is. So we put this on there. So right now, my spawn point should be set. There we go, so if I die, all right, I will spawn right there on top of the command block, which is very, very nice, okay? So that's very, very helpful, that's spawn point. Another one that is going to be very helpful for you is the set block command. Set block is very, very powerful, very amazing. It's one of those things that uh, you can use with tremendous power. It's very, very tricky though, so you gotta be very, very careful. Set block, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a block down at a specific coordinate, and we're gonna fill it in with, let's just say stone. So I hit that, and I come back here. Boom, hit that. It's gonna put stone at that specific coordinate, okay? That's very cool. So we can come back here, we can hit stone. Um, let's copy this, actually. And we'll move one over, so this is to the negative Z. So we're gonna come over here to and put negative two actually, and we're gonna put air at the end, right there. Right. And we put a button on it, and so we put there, boom, there's stone. If I hit this button, air goes there. So that could be really cool for map making, something like that. So let's say, for example, we give ourselves a repeater, and we'll put this here, and we'll do something like this. And then which one is this? Is this the air? So you gotta know the exact coordinate. Okay, it's there. Uh, and the exact coordinate of that stone block is going to be negative 731.5 and neg negative 235. So let's put this in here. And we'll go up one over. And we, or we could just do negative five, I think will work as well. Okay, put that there, put air. And doesn't need redstone. Let's see, that would be one, two, three, four, five. It's six, actually, six over. So we're gonna do negative six, hit enter. So we hit this button, 
it puts stone there, boom, it registers that, and it's gonna go and go and go. It puts air there. So you could imagine for some parkour map, something like that, where it puts stone up there, and then later on, it actually does that as well. Uh, one other really, really cool thing is the fill command, and I wanna talk about this. This is just absolutely amazing. Again, you use the teal day, and we can fill our area with stone. So I have, one, two, I have too many there. You're gonna have six coordinates, and I'm gonna fill my current position with stone. Okay. Now, the cool thing about this, if I go far away from map making, it is just unbelievable. Let's just say I want to build a block, let's say from where I am to 10 over this way, 10 high and 10 wide. We hit done and I, as soon as it stops lagging, boom, everything is frozen. There it is. <laughs> that was a lot of lag. All right, it filled a 10 by 10 by 10 block area with stone very very powerful okay so this is pretty cool to be able to do something like that now a couple other things you can do instead of doing you can do zero and then do hollow i can make actually a hollowed out area here as soon as it loads it's been really glitchy on me so now i have created a hollowed out building here which is pretty sweet I can change it to a different kind of stone by putting a one there and it should do, yep, granite, okay, and I could do, just change it with any kind of block. The hollow is very, very powerful. So you can imagine I put uh, like a repeater of some sort on those coordinates. If you want to do it in a specific coordinate, let's do this first before I show you this, I would write these coordinates down. So this one is, I'm going to fill from negative 713 for negative 253. I'm gonna hit enter. So it puts it in there and it does give me an error, but it's not a big deal. I come over to the other side and I know that I wanna fill that coordinate right there. So that's negative 703, 14 and negative 243. I'm gonna fill that with stone zero and I'm gonna make it hollow. So now it's a specific coordinate. I don't have to worry about teal days. I can come in here and I can copy, control A, control C, come in here and I can paste it and now I can put a button on it and I can run that and I can change this just to see, make sure it actually works. Put a one on it, boom, and it did. And we can put this on a repeater, which would be pretty sweet. Um, if we have, uh, let's copy this command block here. We'll put another one there and another one there and we'll put a repeater in between and we can have like this flashing building almost. And if we have that there there and we'll get some red dust there we go and so this will rotate through the whole thing so this one is going to be one this one's going to be two this will be three and hopefully this won't be too laggy we'll get ourselves a torch here put it down and oops that did not work there we go Oops, that was horrible. My redstone skills could be lacking. Come on, turn off. It's lagging, totally lagging. <laughs> I have totally lagged this system, but you can see here if, you got, if you're not video recording like I am right now, um, you should be able to see it here pretty quick. Let's try it one more time here. See if I can put my redstone dust down in a much... There we go. Okay, so that should do it. And it should go back and forth as it rotates between all of them granite and polished and stone and so forth. So that's really very, very cool to see a building, something like that. And we can go inside and we'll get inside here. We can get inside there and it will also start changing and it's gonna get dark here real quick. I don't wanna be scared. No, I'm gonna get out of there. Okay, so pretty cool things that you can do with the command blocks with the fill command. Uh, very, very powerful for you. So those are a lot of the great things that you're going to be doing for any sort of map making. So definitely use them in your map making. Make some pretty sweet maps. This will get you started off, guys. So have a great time. This is Pelican Tacos, and I'm out.